What is up, gang? How are you doing on this lovely Thursday afternoon? <clears throat> just while I'm uh, just while I'm on here, I just want to check that I am recording live because you know I triple check everything. Oh, wrong group. Yes, beautiful. How you doing on this? Well, I'm very yellow today. How are you doing on this lovely Thursday afternoon is when I'm recording this. Lovely week here, pretty bloody hot. I think uh, England's been pretty rainy as per usual. <clears throat> and yes, I am recording this as a podcast for the Regan's Rugby Strength and Conditioning podcast, but also it is going live in my Facebook group. Now, if you're listening on the podcast and you want to join in on the live Q&A, just search on Facebook, Regan's Rugby First Team. There's 1,600 rugby dads just like you chatting about rugby, training, food, beers, home gyms, all kinds of stuff. So get involved if you want to join in the fun on Facebook. And if you're here now with me in the group, <clears throat> hope you're having a swell time. Hope you enjoy my upgraded camera and mic. I hope it's all set up properly. And my nice yellow light, I need to get a proper light. And please, the two things that I please, please, please ask, I'm giving you all this time, giving you all the resources. I just ask for two things. If you're watching live, do me a favor and like the video. I should be able to see it if you are live. And if you're watching at any point in the future, please comment below replay so I know when people watch them and then I will do more. And if you have any questions, you can see the topics for the day. Um, these are questions that I've had in the last week or so. I don't just make them up. I don't just make up the perfect questions that I can wow you on. Um, I've actually been thinking of questions for these podcasts for about or live videos for about three years. So I'm kind of out of ideas. So I have to go back to what either members or, 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 or uh, just people I have online might ask me. And these are questions and things that we've gone through today. Oh, now the camera's not yellow. What's going on? Maybe it was the camera. Maybe I'm going to bring it a bit closer. Look at this good quality viewing right there. Um, you can see the topics. If you have questions about these topics, you can comment, on the video and I'll I'll try and answer that then. If you have a completely different random question, please also comment and I'll answer it. And if you're in the future, after you've commented replay, because I know you're gonna do it for me because you're a swell chap, um, you can comment a question and I will do my best to answer it. I'm just gonna sip my lemon and honey tea. And we're gonna jump into the podcast slash live Q&A. So, a couple of questions from the week. So the first topic, this was from a client of mine who spoke to me this week, uh, and he was questioning about how to do his warm-up sets for his strength training. So he's doing reps from between five or six up to about 12, based on what he's looking to do and the equipment that he's got. And on, let's say on one given exercise, I'm gonna give the most standard exercise ever, the bench press the mother, the mother load of exercises, the number one, the, the OG. Um, and let's say he was doing four sets of eight, the classic, the classic, actually four sets of 10 is a classic, but four sets of eight, I think I did give him that at one point. So we'll just use that example. Um, and I tell everyone to do a proper whole body warm up for your workouts. You need to open the joints. You need to, now the camera's yellow again. What's going on? Fucking hell. Anyway. Oh, I might be going with the shade of the clouds, actually, because now it's sunny. Oh, it's going cloudy. This is some proper good viewing, guys, I know. If it goes cloudy, let's see. Anyway, where was I? Proper warm-up, activate the muscles, sort out your, your posture. If you're sitting down all day, if you're driving all day, you need to sort out your posture. That's number one. And then the training comes, and he wants to get some bigger muscles. So I gave him some, some classic El Clasico bench press. Uh, and his question was, after he does a set on the bar... He does a set, because the first time he was doing it, he was kind of guesstimating, he hasn't trained for a while, which is, which is normal for the guys jumping on my program. Um, and he does his first set, and that was like really easy. And he was like, oh, that was easy. I'll put the weight up again. And then he does set number two. I'm gonna put some numbers here. Let's say set number one was 40 kilos, really easy. He puts, he puts 50 kilos on, um, and he does eight reps. He had like four or five in the tank. And he was like, oh, that was easy. Well, that was set number two. Let's go on set number three. Sun's out and I'm not yellow. It's linked to the sun. 
Maybe I should close this. Maybe I should get more professional in my lighting. Anyway, set number three comes. And he does uh, 60 kilos. And the number eight was hard, but he still had one more in. And he was like, oh, I still had one more in. Oh, well, that's set three done. And then set number four, the last allocated set of, of that exercise, he puts it up to 65. And on the last one, it's a real grinder, and he gets it up. And so in his books, on the current knowledge he had at that point in time of the training session, he was like, oh, I've done my four sets. Tick, box ticked. Um, which I said to him, we did a one-to-one -one call last week, that's not how you do it. He's only done one hard set. His body's not going to react much to one set of that exercise, which is basically all he's done. Um, what you should be doing, and my examples from my own training, when I was training for English Strongest Man, all these kind of strength competitions, whenever the first set is the difficult one, because sometimes you don't know how you feel on that day, if you had a bad sleep, if you didn't eat so well, your kids might have kept you up, whatever. Whenever the first set is the most is the one where you actually get the, your reps. So let's say he, he this guy had to do eight reps. Only on set number four was the eighth rep difficult. All the ones before he should scrap and not count, and that should be set one. And then on his numbers, we said it was sixty-five. So he should try sixty-five again. If he tried it again, he maybe would squeeze out eight reps. Some dog hair on my thing. Maybe would squeeze out eight reps. If he did 65 a third time, which would be his real third set, probably, if it was near failure, he might only get seven, maybe six or seven, which is okay, because it's still to failure. And then what he would do on set four, drop the weight down to 60 kilos, because it's better to do the, the appointed number of reps on a proper weight than if he stayed at 65 and did three, or maybe hurt himself. So if he drops down to 60 for set number four, and then he did eight reps or maybe nine reps. That is a perfect four sets. He may have done the bar and then 40 and then 50 and all that should be warm up. No, and 60. No, 60 was the first so working first working set. The terms warm up set and working set, I don't talk about too much because because people aren't usually lifting that much weights to, to need to differentiate. But a working set, if I gave this guy four sets of eight, that's four working sets. Anything before the first difficult set, you scrap. It is Rubbish. Um, so that's how he's done it. That's how he is doing it from now on. And if you're in the same scenario, that is how you should be doing it. Um, now that is only the case kind of for weighted stuff because your body needs to get used to it and you need to practice technique. It sounds silly, but there's actually a lot to think about in bench press technique. And if you haven't had a fitness coach or strength and conditioning coach or maybe like a, a class instructor, tell a uh, class instructor probably wouldn't actually know the intricate technique of a strength bench press. Anyway, if so, no one's told you, there's probably loads of things you're doing wrong. And all these little tweaks could mean that you can push more weight on the bar and it means that your muscles and your joints are taking more weight so they're going to be stronger. So that's why if you're doing strength training, you do want to lift a lot of weight because that's going to give your body the most amount of change. Most amount of change? The best amount of change um, towards what you're looking to do. So that's that. Any questions? If you disagree, let me know. If you think it's useful, let me know. Let me know below because I've got a new rhyme. Eating slash training around travel days. Yes, another chap of mine who's been on the Rugby Fit program for nine, ten months. I think we've passed the one year mark. Anyway, near the one year mark. Um, he was moving somewhere. He, he, was, he was flying somewhere and he was going to live there for six weeks. Um, and basically he was wondering how to manage. It was actually a food question. So I'm going to really answer the food because that was the experience I had this week. That's how I helped that guy. How to manage his food on getting a train to the airport, waiting at the airport, getting his four hour flight, getting a train and a bus the other side. So it was something like 16 hours of, of travel. And a lot of people have a lot more than 16 hours. Um, but basically, on these days when there's big life changes and big things going on, this is not the day to be anal and to the calorie about your food. Like, I mean, if you're a professional rugby player or if you're a bodybuilder doing a, a professional bodybuilding show and your livelihood depends on it, then yeah, you still keep to the calorie and whatever. But uh, in my opinion, I train normal guys. 
you don't stress yourself on these travel days. There's enough worrying going on. You've got about six different modes of transport. Any can be canceled, any can be cock up, any can be a fucking COVID halt on them. Um, so what I would say to him and you, if you're in the same scenario, is to not be, I mean, be as strict as you can, but do not stress yourself. Now, like I, like I just said the example, professional rugby players, they'll have all their meals prepped for them. If you're doing a bodybuilding show, you will, you will spend like six hours the day before prepping every single thing. But let's give some examples of what this person could, could, could do on that travel day. Let's say that they were, they were late, they didn't do it all, they were packing, they were busy, whatever. What can they eat on, on that day? And this is actually, I didn't plan on doing this, so it's gonna be good me giving you uh, it's like real-time feedback because I didn't plan on talking about it. So let's do some examples. Let's say he's got 14 hours. He leaves at four and he's gonna get to the destination at six o'clock. So four o'clock in the morning, what have you got at home? You might have a banana, you might have an apple, or you just sack it off. You get on the train, you, you, you fast, whatever you wanna call it, whatever reason you wanna give it, just don't eat patiently. Get on the train, go to the airport. You can handle two hours. Okay, so it's six o'clock now. Oh, I'm giving time, so I'm gonna have to keep up there. So it's six o'clock now and you're there two hours early. So you've got two hours in any airport. Now, usually, unless it's a little ditty one, there is, there's something of a healthier type of food. It could be somewhere where you can get a sushi place, somewhere where you can get a, a rice thing or like even a Nando's thing. Or even if you go to a Spoons, there's healthy options that you can have. Obviously, I'm thinking of going to Stansted on my rugby tours and not giving two shits what I'm eating and drinking when I'm going on tours and boys weekends. But there are good things. There's jacket potatoes and chicken breast. There's, there's healthy stir fries. There's healthier things, even at normal pubs, that you can have if you really want to stick to it and you haven't, and if you haven't, uh, planned ahead. And let's say it's a tiny airport, there's only one WH Smith. You can either have a giant white bread sub with two packets of crisps and a Coke, which off the top of my head, fucking let's make up 500 gram calorie Subway, uh, not Subway, sub, <laughs> pack of crisps, actually quite low calorie. Two packets of crisps, 300 calories, and a normal Coke is another 400. That would be, oh, quick maths, 1200, 1300 calories just in fucking little crappy on the go lunch. But if you just think about what you're gonna have and if you have a healthier, just sarni, some chicken in there, some tuna in there, that might be 300 calories. Crisps aren't too bad. Like, I don't have a problem against crisps. They're low, they're pretty low cal these days. Most of them are baked and they're not too bad. So I might even say, go ahead and have a pack of crisps. But if you don't wanna do that, you can have an apple, you can have a banana. Um, and then some water, water. Some water, that was the Essex coming out. Some water, some water, some fizzy water, a diet drink. Oh look, I'm yellow again, because the cloud. Look at me, I'm fucking, I need to change my light now. Some water, some fizzy water, some diet coke, whatever. That would be a much, that would be total, 300 plus 150 plus a zero cal drink, 450 cows for that lunch, instead of what could be 1300 if you didn't care what you're having. Uh, and it's just these little tweaks that you could have. Oh, so let's go through the timeline. So what is it now? It's eight o'clock, he gets on his four hour flight. On the flight, they're gonna offer you, hmm, let's say he, let's say he's not going cheapo. Let's say he's got one where they have to give you a meal and you haven't prepped. So all you have is what they give you. That's gonna make that decision for you. <laughs> like there's no other option. Like they, when they, whatever they offer you is gonna be a bloody handful of this meal or a handful of this meal you haven't got a choice, so just chomp it in. If you really want to, you can knock away the dessert, you can knock away the bread and butter, and some of them some of them are quite good. Sometimes it's like fish and rice and beans and stuff. And if you really want to, you can knock off the pudding and the whatever. There's normally some nuts on there, they're quite calorific, but they're quite filling as well. That's what you could do on the plane. Healthy snacks on a plane, I don't think I've come across any. So we're going to skip that. So what is it now, time-wise? Four, six, eight. It's 12 o'clock. He's landed in the country. Um, let's say his bus is delayed and he's in this foreign country. Not foreign. He's in this new country and uh, looking around what to do. They're going to have the equivalent of what you had in the first place. They're going to have a Mackey's. They're going to have a KFC. They're going to have a Starbucks. But if you just do a little bit of digging, there might be a pub with some healthy meals. There might be a normal WH Smith, where you can get the same kind of meal. No, it's not perfect, but it's better than having fucking double cheeseburger and 
chips and a pudding from their version of spoons. There's no foreign version like spoons. Anyway, um, so that's going to take you to six o'clock and then, oh, that was it, 14 hours, whatever. So then you get on the bus and you're there. So that's what you could do if you're last minute. It's just about having these choices and not thinking, ah, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm just gonna have whatever. But if you if if you wanna do that, and if you're in your stag do, or if you're on whatever holiday, do whatever the fuck you want. But if you want to stick to the plan, the guy I'm talking about, he's, he's lost about two and a half stone and like just little increases in his calories means that his weight will react. So I was like, let's be as good as we can. That was good examples, Reg. Um, next one, quitting smoking, affecting your training. So smoking is generally bad for you. That's common knowledge. But then again, so is McDonald's and all that shit, but people still have it. Smoking is generally bad for you. Um, funny story, when I was doing Strongman, uh, we went to Terry Holland's gym and I rocked up like, oh my God, I'm going to train at Terry Holland's gym. Like, he's gone to World Strongest Man. He got third place twice. Oh my God, it's, it's going to be amazing. It's really professional. And I rocked up and he was just smoking cigs for about 30 minutes because for that sport, you don't need aerobic endurance. You don't need general fitness. Obviously, if you play rugby or if you're going for runs or whatever, then smoking will directly affect that. But anyway, that's just a funny story of Terry Holland's just puffing away. Um, this chap, he said that uh, his head was all over the place this week and it was finding it hard in the gym, he wasn't enjoying it as much, when he was doing his weights it wasn't getting as much of a pump and he felt weird and I just said to him, what's, what's, what's happened in your life in the, last, in the last two weeks because his food was on point, the training was all good, nothing had changed um, data wise that I can see and that's my job to probe and find out why this might be happening and he said oh i quit smoking last week and i said well that's how long you've been smoking and i think he said like on and off like 10 years and i was like, well that's a big change that's not something that i can monitor but that's a big change on your lifestyle and your mindset and your whatever and actually quitting smoking a lot of people take up food and they put on weight because smoking was the thing the habit that they did that kept them away from snacking but when you uh come off smoking you still want to go and do something every 30, 45 minutes, and that turns into snacking. And there's a lot of stories of people, not a lot of stories, it happens. People um, quit smoking and then uh, put on loads of weight because they snack. But anyway, it's my job to make sure this guy doesn't. Um, and yeah, my advice to him was just play the play the game. Just, just you've got to go along with it. Luke, quitting smoking is better in the long run. It's a better example for the kids. He's He was very adamant on on his motivations were, were, were set a good example, and so he's gonna crack on. So if that's you, and if you're thinking of quitting smoking, uh, it may affect your training that week in a, in a bad way, but I actually don't know how quick it would it would come out of your system. Actually, I think technically it doesn't ever come out, and you always have tar in your lungs or whatever. I'm not being all fucking self-righteous and, oh, you smoked, because I on and off smoked for like three years, just because I was cool, man, that's what the cool kids do. Um, and that's probably still in my lungs at some point. I don't really know. I don't really know. Next topic, strong versus weak excuses. So <clears throat> it, I didn't want to just slate this guy for something he said to me, but the, the topic was about a good excuse for skipping a workout or for not doing a training program might be the fact that you split with your partner, you got full custody of the kids and you got a full-time job and you want to support them. You only get an hour every night, Monday to Saturday and Sunday, you want to relax. That's a good excuse why someone is not physically possible to start a training program. That human can probably eat well and change some daily habits, but that's like a good reason. And if someone was telling me that, I'd probably say to myself, it's probably not the right timing for them to jump on a plan. But the weak excuse is the example of someone who just the way they phrased it. Uh, I think I said, they were asking me some questions and I was like, so how come you're not on top of your training now? And he said, ah, oh, it's just hard to eat late at night. I was like, sorry, what do you mean? He's like, oh, it's just, just hard to eat late at night, you know? It's like, what do you mean it's hard to eat late at night? What are you talking about? It's hard to eat late at night. You just fucking go and shove it in your mouth, mate. Um, and he was like, oh, you know, just after I put the kids to bed and then I have to cook and then it's late. Oh, it's, just, it's just hard. And I was like, you don't think every single member of my program, well, not every member is a dad, but 80% are 
are dads who are in the same scenario and they put their kids to bed and then they go drag themselves off the sofa to their garage and do a workout and then they go and make their food and they go to bed. I was like, fucking, I didn't say this because it was, I didn't know him at all. It was the first few times I'd spoke to him. I wanted to be like, get a fucking grip, mate. It, it, it's, it's hard to eat late at night. What's wrong with you? Cook, 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 cook batch cook. You don't even have to cook your meal then. You just bloody bang it in the microwave or eat it cold, whatever it is. And then, uh, and then you just chomp it in. Eating is what, five minutes? Doesn't have to be pretty. You don't have to put a bloody candle on and have your fucking polished china silverware out every bloody time. Just get in there and chomp it down you mate. Because the, a post-workout meal is important because that's gonna refuel you for the next day. Um, anyway, that's just a fun example, I thought I'd say. Um, next topic was another member last week question. Uh, he became a dad, so first of all, congrats my man. If you're watching, you'll know it's about you. I think you watched some of these, some of these videos. And we just decided what to do that week because um, he's off work right now. He does like rotations, so he does like three months on, three months off. So he's off work right now, so work's not a question. And basically he was in and out of the hospital, the, the, his wife, girlfriend, wife, not sure. She was um, overdue, so he never know when he went out to do it. He was on call, he was anxious, his eating was weird, he couldn't do it. And I was like, look mate, let's just chill out for one week. Um, overall picture, you're gonna be a dad, which is a lifelong thing, which is a big thing to, to celebrate. And just like the example of on the travel days, you're not going to be 100% on the week that you're becoming a dad and your partner's giving birth, you're not going to be 100%. Probably even the same example, pro rugby players or pro bodybuilders, actually maybe bodybuilders would because they're fucking so anal whenever they train. They, uh, they might not go off plan. Rugby player probably would a bit. Uh, but I said to him, look, if you've got to go in and out and you're not really sure what you're doing, how about we just give you a little bit of open water, not free reigns, but let's chill out a bit on how strict we are at food because we all know hospital food is shit. I've given the example of a WH Smith, it's not even that, it's gonna be real crappy, real crappy sandwiches, all chocolate, not much healthy option at all. And he was gonna be there most of the week. Um, I don't want him at home fucking prepping all these Tupperware meals to two hours just in case he goes to hospital. So I said, look, just have what you can. Still monitor your food. Don't have any snacks. Don't just go on a bender. Um, don't just eat chocolate in the hospital because it's there. But just just take it easy and just realize that, know that you can have what you can on that day. Uh, like if he's at a hospital. And with the training, um, I said, let's, let's put my workouts back because he wants to really take it seriously and really focus and, and already he, he'd like stopped a few early because of a phone call or because of whatever. Um, and I lost myself because my bloody lemon and honey tea. Yeah, he's got his own home gym and, he, and he's got a rowing machine, he's got a road bike and I said, look, why don't you kind of run your own training this week whenever you have 30 minutes, whenever you whatever, just do your own thing. Do your own thing, man. Um, and uh, we'll we'll restart the plan next week when um, when you're back on the ball and when that like, baby's at home and everything's relaxed and he was very happy with that and then I can't remember his way in this week on Monday um, but he didn't go off the rails he still did 20 30 minutes on one of the cardio machines each day and it was uh, and he was present for the birth of his child which is uh, very important and if you don't know this about me I support lifestyles and being social, especially after everyone was stuck in their front room for a year, year and a bit, still now you might be depending on your scenario. I want people to go out, I want people to be normal. It's not one of those, you never cheat on my program type programs. It's just about monitoring it and maintaining it and making sure it's not like a whole weekend going AWOL and you can still have your night out, still have a few beers, have low cal drinks if you, if you really wanna be on the ball, have a burger and chips once a week, have a pizza once a week. Um, yeah, that's the kind of thing I do. So those are the topics. I am going to go on Facebook and see if there's any questions or anything live that someone's gonna try and stump me with. No, I think we've got a few likes from the boys, so thanks for that. Uh, no comments, just a few likes, so cheers boys. If you're watching it live, still like the video, please. Or if you like the video, then you can like the video. Um, and if you're watching it in the future, please comment, replay, 
and I'll know when you're watching it. And if you've got any more questions, send them in and I will give you my answer as soon as I hear it. Hope it's been useful. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you don't like it. And uh, have a bloody good Thursday. If you've got rugby tonight, have fun. If you don't, go smash a gym sesh or a run or a bodyweight workout, whatever you want. Um, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed it. Much love. Speak to you soon. Peace out.